fairness gone, and nobody trusts the council meetings anymore. So let's let's get back to good, fair, and respecting each other's opinions. Fundamental, right, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. John, did you want to respond to that, or will we respond later? I'll respond. Okay, Rosemary McConkie. September 3rd was described as the perfect cover-up by the senior auditor. Um, I've heard the mayor again, uh, sorry, John, John Henry again this evening uh, speak about the uh, discourtesy, disrespect, uh, bad behavior of the citizens in the council chamber. That's their council chamber. Uh, what happened that evening, what was most disrespectful that evening, was having the Auditor General sit through him. Uh, what happened that evening, what was most disrespectful that evening, was having the Auditor General sit through a seven-hour meeting, not allow him to address council, read his report, make a statement, and fire him publicly at the end of the meeting. Uh, Unfortunately, um, the undercover police in that council chamber have not been explained. Uh, one of the platforms, uh, one of the planks in my platform I have right there, if there is a police presence in the council chamber, they must be in uniform. Uh, several people have gone, asked council to ensure that there are no hidden weapons in the council chamber, uh, which were there and which caused the ruckus. There was not the disturbance that you would think watching the YouTube videos until people realized there were undercover police in the council chamber. And Rosemary, I'm going to ask you again. I mean, the question was, what would you do? Well, I would call a recess, and that did not happen. Uh, and, and in fact, I would have it recorded in the minutes of the meeting if there is a disturbance. Uh, that did not happen. This happened during the meeting. Uh, people were ejected. Uh, Police were there, and there's absolutely no record, and that's why we we call it the perfect cover-up. Not just myself, but like I said, the senior auditor, uh, who position was terminated. Thank you, Chris Koppel. I'll give you a couple of analogies. The mayor is the CEO of the corporation, of the city of Oshawa. The mayor has to take charge if there's a if there's a chaotic council meeting. Yes, you give leeway. You let people speak. I've done lots of mediation in my time. You must let people speak. But when there's chaos, there's not good business. And the mayor must take charge, like the Speaker of the House in Parliament. And you all watch Parliament. How embarrassing it is. But the Speaker attempts to take charge over that. And so must the mayor. But there's more. You must show respect, because they are all elected. They're paid by you. They represent you. But they act as if at times, this is a divided city council, eight to three, that, that's true. They act as if it's somehow their own private fiefdom. You must remember who elected you, who pays you, whom you serve. And you must remember you're doing the city's business. And so, as if I was mayor, I would make sure there wasn't not chaos going on in the city hall or, or, or in the council, meeting, council chambers. I would show respect to people. You reach across the aisle and bipartisanship. You try to find common ground. You don't focus on what you disagree with. You focus on what you can agree on to build coalitions for the betterment of the city. That's why you're there. That's being thorough, open, and honest, which is my policy, my business, and how I'd be as mayor. Bill Longworth. Yeah, they, the, the mayor uh, interrupts so frequently when you're making a presentation. I've made dozens and dozens and dozens of presentations over the last two terms of council. And, you know, you're given five minutes. And of that, the mayor is interrupting and using two minutes of that, saying, well, you can't use that word. You can't use, I don't like that. You, you know, like he's censoring the word all along. Yep. As, as Hang on for a second, Bill. I, again, you guys are such politicians. I mean, the question was, <laughs> what would you do to the city council to do? So, so I would exercise strong leadership, and with 28 years of administering, supervising, university-educated professionals, and running regular meetings, for 28 years, I think I know how to run meetings. And it's sure not an entry level job, as John says, but I've got more experience running meetings than any of these people up here. 28 years of it. Now, and as for the September 3rd uprising, you know, I sponsored a girl from China and she was over visiting her family in China shortly after that September 3rd, 3rd uprising. Her father said, he'd heard of all this, he said, 
look, is that what Canada's all about? Because I'm concerned about your safety. And this is in China. You know, the Chinese people don't even know what's going on in Hong Kong, but they know what's going on in Oshawa City Council. Bill, I'll hold you to that. Move on. Well, to re reiterate, um, one of the things that we asked was that uh, uh, Mr. Henry investigate. Uh, he said that he was happy the police were there. He was not aware of their presence in City Council. And the obvious thing would be, why were they present? Who asked them to be there? They had to be there by special request. I went to a police services board meeting and asked the question of the chief of police, why were the police a high value asset, such as undercover police, utilized as uh, undercovers in the city council meeting? Uh, there was no real reason, according to media reports at the time, uh, the, the media uh, public relations officer at Durham Regional Police said that it was they were monitoring social network, social media networks and they were concerned about uh, the well-being of people participating. At the Police Services Board, the Chief said something completely different. They were requested to be there. Mr. Henry did absolutely nothing to find out why they were there, who asked them to be there, and what was their purpose, what was their instruction. There was names provided on a list that was included in police notes. Men were targeted and they were forcibly uh, taken out of the chambers and that is no way to conduct a council meeting. It creates a sense of fear, a sense of uh, not belonging, and we have to prevent that because people can't feel engaged if they're in fear. Thank you. Thank you. John Henry. I, I am a member of the Police Services Board and I'm covered by the Police Services Act. And um, what the Act basically says is that no individual member of a board can direct a police officer and only the board can direct the chief and that we do not get involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the police department. That is not our job and that's what the Act says. You know, on September 3rd, I don't know why the police were there. Um, <laughs> I don't know why they were in the room, nor would, nor would have the police told me under the rules related to my job as a member of the Police Services Board. You can read the Act. It's in writing. But your you know, staff member called them. You can't ask the no, staff excuse me, member. Huh? Let, let John finish. So, as far as, as my job as a member of the Police Services Board, um, we are not allowed to direct. Um, police officers. Hey, 30 seconds, Rosemary. I was there with Lou Devano. I overheard the Chief of Police say a staff member from the City of Oshawa called the police to be present. Oh, a staff you member, you are CEO of the Corporation of the City of Oshawa. These are your staff. You should be asking. You have not. You have not given an explanation for why they were there that evening. Exactly. You don't so show any interest. Yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. 30 you seconds, Bill. Yeah, if, I was the chief, if I was the chief magistrate of this city and these police were invited without me knowing about it and I didn't approve it, I would be damn mad. And if there was a staff member that uh, notified the police, uh, that person would be, have, have lost his job at City Hall. You know, we, uh, my question is, if the chief magistrate is not in charge, who's in charge? Wait, is, it, is it the one alderman? Head of the group of eight? Bill. John Gray, 30 seconds. As mayor, I can tell you, the police are great communicators. The only thing is you just can't breach their confidence, but they'll tell you about, you know, a, a John sweep or a, you know, prostitute bust or, you know, a drug house. And you'll find out ahead of time so that you're prepared. And I'm absolutely certain that uh, somebody was misguided in requesting undercover cops, plainclothes officers. Yep. If you want law and order, it's uniform. Yep. Period. Full stop. This is what's wrong with current counsel. Dismissive. He sits there and hides behind the police act. Instead of doing yeah. real time, he doesn't take the stuff to what happens in the Too much clapping, you're going to be arrested. <laughs>
Well, I'm glad I mean, there's much more to discuss than an incident uh, that happened.